Okay. On your MySpace page, you mentioned you make music that makes your heart think. What do you mean by this? <clears throat> uh, when I say I make music that makes your heart think, uh, you know, I think uh, love, love is something that's not as popular as it used to be in songs and music, you know, uh, in the day of uh, Crank That Soldier Boy and, and, and things of that nature. You know, I, I just wanted people to think a little deeper than uh, what's, what's directly in front of them. So uh, I talk a lot about love and life and, you know, okay. makes your heart what think. What artists or songs make your heart think? Um, I'd have to say uh, something like a... Uh, I'm sure a Stevie Wonder song is a number of them, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know what comes. Love's in Need is one that comes to, mo to mind right now. Uh, even, even, you know, even though the Hey Jude is not a, a love song per se by the Beatles, but uh, it's that kind of thing that makes you, makes you feel, you know. Also on your MySpace page, you mentioned about how you call your music soul for pop. What is soul for pop? Uh, well, it was my, people always ask me what, you know, what genre my music is, and that was my way of kind of giving an answer and not really answering the question. You know, I feel like soulful music is not genre, genre specific. Uh, like I said, I, I just, I just gave you a Stevie Wonder song and a Beatles song. Uh, I think they both can be soulful. Uh, you know, Yesterday is as soulful as, as a Stevie Wonder song to me, and, uh, so it's not something that's genre specific. And I always, I feel like soulful music is music that touches your soul, you know, something that, that you can feel. Uh, whether it be a country song, rock song, R&B song, rap song, it's just, it's soulful if you can feel it. And pop music, um, although pop has been kind of, uh, these days it's been um, Britney Spears or NSYNC or something like that, um, in, in the definition, the real definition of pop music is popular music. And it's music that can, uh, reach a number of people, uh, age, gender, uh, you know, race, whatever. So I always want to be able to t touch a lot of people and relate to a lot of people with my music. So it's all, always soulful and always pop. You've mentioned the Beatles and Stevie Wonder. How did you become influenced by such acts as a preacher's kid? Uh, well, you know, I think Stevie was one of those guys that kind of slipped in the, in the, you know, <clears throat> Church people were okay with Stevie because he was he was positive and and, and kind of didn't uh, uh, while while it wasn't talking about God specifically, um, it never it never contradicted that so so it was okay. And the Beatles, my mom was a big fan. My mom uh, was in college at UNO when the Beatles were huge, and she uh, she just always talked about the Beatles and had me listening to the Beatles as a little kid. So I I became a fan early on. Okay. So you recently won the Stella Award for Song of the Year. Yeah. How, how important is it for you to be accepted by that audience? Um, I mean, to be honest, I, you know, uh, I kind of make music selfishly and, and, and just hope that people dig it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know that it's important for me to be accepted by anybody mm -hmm. specifically. Um, it's always good to be appreciated and recognized for something that you do. So um, I was happy to be recognized and appreciated, but not that I, I, I needed that uh, per, per se, you know. I think as an independent musician, and, and, uh, um, you learn to just become okay with, uh, with what you do. You, you don't need, um, you don't really need somebody to, you know, to validate you necessarily. Um, also, one of your songs, Don't Ever Leave, combines New Orleans Bounce. Uh -huh. how, how did that song come about? Uh, you know, I think, I, um, I, I mean, I grew up on bounce music, you know, because, because I'm from New Orleans. And uh, I, I saw that every time an artist kind of got past a certain point in their uh, being nationally known, they kind of left that uh, <laughs> form of music. And I think, you know, the, the way I saw us as kids and in the high school and whatnot, the answer to that music, I just saw that, that, that the world could, you know, if we, if, we, if we put it out there. So I just kind of wanted to take it a step further and put it in my, in my music. In what other ways has New Orleans influenced you as a musician? Um, I think it's just the, the appreciation. It, you know, this is a rich town to be from, uh, with it being the birthplace of jazz, uh, whereas we, you know, we know what horns are as kids. Like, we, it, that's constantly, we constantly see that. We, we can see somebody playing a horn on the street. 
where it's not like that everywhere. You know, you don't you don't just know that from growing up. And I think the appreciation of it, and you know, it's why the music that I do always has some type of you know live instrumentation, live horns going on, live strings going on, because New Orleans makes you appreciate um, those real instruments. You know, would you ever move back to New Orleans? Would I ever move back to New Orleans? Um, I, before Katrina, I was I was commuting between New Orleans and Atlanta, and uh, you know I, I, I was planning to to, to uh, open up a studio here and whatnot. I, I never say never. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's got to be you know I always say someone is serious about their craft when they're willing to move um, to where the craft is really is is really happening. And, you know Atlanta, New York, L. A. When you're doing music are are some of the places you need to be where where the industry is. Um, if you want to be a jazz musician, you need to come to New Orleans. You know, if you if, if you want to do that. So I'm not I'm not sure if I would be here permanently, but I do want to do something here because it's home and because the music is so rich. And kind of I didn't I didn't realize how accessible the industry was until I left New Orleans. So I you know I want to show people that there there is more industry than, than what is what's here. The music industry is changing, and you've released numerous amount of albums independently. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's necessary for artists to remain creatively independent? Uh, I think um, <coughs> always creatively independent. Yeah, I, th I think um, the way the industry is is going right now, uh, with records having big problems uh, selling and whatnot, uh, and, and it going to a more internet-based thing, um, it's allowing people to be creative and. Uh, you know, whereas record companies used to used to make the calls, now it's kind of they're kind of looking to independent musicians and independent songwriters to uh, to tell them what's happening now. Um, so I think it's easier to be um, creatively independent, not not dissing a major label if the major label allows you to be creatively independent. Because uh, you know Stevie Wonder was creatively independent, and they just let him be Stevie. And uh, Prince was the same way. He w he he was weird to say the least, but they they wanted it just like that, you know. Janis Joplin was the same way when when Clive saw Janis perform. He didn't want to change anything. So I think that's what's that's kind of what's what's messed the industry up altogether. Is that uh, people trying to change and make artists, opposed to letting artists be artists and say, I'm going to put you out like this. How has the increase in digital downloads affected your career as a songwriter? Uh, it, it hasn't affected me at all. Uh, I think I think it's it's kind of the, the big labels that are affected. The songwriters aren't really affected because, um, you know, I mean, besides the stealing, of course. I mean, that, that hasn't changed. You know, cassettes were were uh, were dubbed back in the day, even before you burned CDs. Um, so. Uh, you know, it, it affects you in that way where you don't get paid if somebody steals your song opposed to buying it. Um, but not in a big way like they're getting hit, though. You too, with Erica Badu, she's adjusting to the new digital landscape by starting an internet street team, releasing USBs, and releasing more than one CD this year. Um, <coughs> what do you think of her digital initiatives? Uh, I think it's, it's where the world is going. Like, if you know, it's kind of like the people who didn't want to who didn't want to put their typewriter up, you know, and, and get a computer? It's like you gotta you gotta keep it moving if you want to be a part. And uh, I think it's just uh, it's just like Erica to to, uh, to keep moving like that um, because she's she's such a creative person. And it's like either either you do or you kind of get lost in the you kind of get lost in the shuffle. How was it working with Erica? Uh, it was great. I toured with Erica Badu for about. A, uh, a year and a half to two years, and uh, I learned a lot. I actually got off that tour and recorded my first solo record uh, just because I was inspired by what was going on. Uh, she was very creative, a very uh, down-to-earth person, and, and I just learned a lot from uh, from her show because she's she's very much a, sh a showman. Ringtone subscription services and internet satellite radio are also becoming normal mediums for listening to music. There has also been much debate between publishers, record labels, and performance rights organizations on who should get royalties from these new mediums. What is your stance on that? Uh, well, I, I think uh, you know, internet radio should be set up the same as regular radio is. They're they're uh, they're playing the records the same type of way. So I think I, I definitely think it should, you know, 
go to the songwriters, uh, I mean, to whoever owns the publishing, it's the same type of way. I don't, I don't think it should be set up differently because it's not really. <coughs> Your latest CD was released with the PJ Martin band. What is the difference between PJ Martin and the band, PJ Martin? Uh, stylistically, it, we went a different way uh, with the band. Um, more more pop rock type of things on on the on the band thing and also that was me it was a it was a kind of a um a, a plan to people would always ask me to come and perform by myself and I'm, i've always whether i was solo or not I've, I've always had a band with me and uh that was kind of my excuse to tell people that i couldn't come along because i'm a band now so it's that was you know you were also part of a band called freestyle nation mm -hmm. has that disbanded all? Yeah, we disbanded a few years ago um, before I did my solo record. I uh, just decided to do, uh, to pursue different things. Uh, although the drummer and the guitarist are still, are still a part of my band. You mentioned earlier that you use a lot of live instruments. Is that a conscious thing that you do or is it just yeah, I, you know, I, I use drum machine, and, and like, I, you know, I, I've worked for, I used to be on, a, uh, on a Jermaine Dupri's writing team, and you know, I, I, not that I've never t touch a drum machine and, and whatnot, but there, there's something that you can't uh, replace uh, about live musicians in the studio. Uh, you know, just time, the timing, the groove of things, it's just, you, you can't quite um, do it over with a machine, so I always, like to have some type of live, uh, live thing going on on my record. Um, but do you think of the current state of R and B? R and B. Also, um, yeah. I mean, um, they're they're you know they're good and, and bad. R and B. Trying to think who I. I I'm a fan of. Uh, I like this new guy, The Dream. He, he's the guy that wrote, uh, he's a writer first. He wrote uh, Umbrella for Rihanna and Bed for, for Jay Holiday. He, I mean, I like his record. Um, I think a lot of R&B is not progressive at all. You know, um, when you talk about R&B, what started as R&B, when you talk about the Marvin Gaye's and the Donny Hathaway's, and it's not doing that anymore, you know, so I think it can, it can get better. But of course, there, there are always uh, exceptions to the rules. So there's some good guys. You know, you have a publishing deal with Paramount, and you've mentioned that you would like to score movies. Have you ever had any success in scoring movies yet? I just got, I just got a, uh, just recently, uh, like three months ago, got a, a uh, opportunity to score a movie. We haven't started on it yet, but so that'll be coming, and it'll be my first time being able to do that. What other instruments do you play? I play a little guitar, and bass, guitar. I started on drums, but I don't do that anymore. What is your primary instrument for writing? Uh, piano is definitely piano. primary. I mean, guitar makes me write a little different from piano, but um, I just I can't do everything I can do on guitar that I can on piano. So sometimes I get frustrated and just go back to what I know best. Okay, your new album has been said to combine um, the classic Stevie Wonder of like interviews, inner vision, and music of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us more information about that app? About my new record coming out? Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of, uh, it's more of a current record um, where, where my, my previous albums were all the way live. It's like we went in the studio and we did them all the way live. It's this kind of, this new record, and it's hopefully it comes out in September, but it's kind of. Kanye West meets uh, Stevie Wonder type thing in the sense of there are there are more beats and more uh, um, electronic things going on. But with the live, I still have a, a live string section on everything and, and horn, a horn section. So it kind of it kind of merges the two worlds. How do you approach songwriting? Um, well, well, it happens different ways. At, you know, each time. Um, more more often than not, I, I usually have a melody in my head and kind of play at the piano, and I'll hum something, and um, eventually it turns into words. But that's usually my process. It's, it's piano first, then lyrics, you know. So you mentioned Stevie Wonder, John Lennon, and Prince and James Taylor as your influences. 
Um, what attracted you to those artists as songwriters? <clears throat> Uh, I guess the, the stories really, like James Taylor to me, um, always um, his approach his approach was different. I, I love the way he played guitar, how guitar was always the center of everything that he did and, and it, it kind of affected his approach to how he talked about things. And to me, uh, James was just, um, he was really soulful in his approach as well. John Lennon, um, I always, uh, looked up to because of the the risks that he took uh, in his music. Uh, who else did you say, Stevie? Yes, Stevie. Stevie was just uh, he's just a genius in his uh, his melodies, man. You know, it's like he tells a story even if he didn't say a word, just with the melodies and whatnot. And uh, Prince. Yeah. <laughs> Prince. Uh, Prince to me was more of a, a an influence of live. He, you know. Um, I studied his live shows and how he was able to capture people, uh, capture a live audience more than anything. All of these artists have some kind of legacy. What do you want your le legacy to be? Wow. Um, I mean, I just, I just want to do good songs, man. You know, that people can say, uh, you know, you can listen to 20 years later and it's still relevant, opposed to something that's so current that, uh, you know, it sounds like, uh, it sounds super dated when, when, when you listen to it 10 or 20 years later. So. Do you consider yourself a songwriter or a musician first? I, I, I'm a, I was a musician first. Um, you know, that's before, I, before I put a pen on paper at all, I was, I was playing keys. Uh, so um, the songwriting came after that. The, I was playing probably when I was eight, nine, you know, something like that. <coughs> And then songwriting came when I was like 14. So uh, I'll always be a musician first. You know. Who's your dream collaboration? Uh, it'd have to be Stevie. Uh, more current, uh, John Mayer. I feel like he's one of he's one of our uh, he's one of the guys that's going to be around a long time. You know, he's he's our uh, our Eric Clapton or you know, something like that. So that would be cool. In negotiating contract with a publisher, what should every songwriter look for in the contract? Uh, well, you, you should look for in a publishing contract. Mm -hmm. you, said, um, <coughs> you should look for uh, is a minimum commitments as far as songs per year. Um, these days, you know, people don't go past four years in a deal. You shouldn't really go past four years unless it's just something amazing. But usually, um, you know, the things that I've done, and, and I actually just got out of my famous publishing deal, but, um, you know, a year and two options uh, where you can get paid that first year, and they have to pay you again on those two options. But they're, of course, they're their options to keep you. Uh, but I, would, I wouldn't go over three years right here in 2008. It's just, it's, it's not really happening anymore. Um, what else would I look for? Um, of course, that they support you if you chart. Um, there should be bonuses and whatnot if you make it to, you know, top 40 and, and, and if you Billboard 100, uh, different things like that. You know, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, those are kind of the basic things. You know, I kind of let my attorney really do it. So, how did you meet up with Dwayne Woods and Right Let Go? Uh, well, I knew uh, I knew his manager. Mm -hmm. I actually I didn't know Dwayne at all. I had, I had written Let Go for somebody else, and uh, I missed their album cutoff date, and uh, his manager was, you know, really wanted me to meet Dwayne, and um, so he hooked it up, he, they flew to Atlanta, and, um, you know, the rest is really history, man. They liked the song as soon as he, uh, he was telling me about his life and uh, things he had gone through, and, I, you know, I knew that I had this record that really fit him, so it was kind of like I just handed it over, and they they loved the song, and and uh, you know, fifty weeks on, in the top ten later, you know, we won Song of the Year. So it's it really happened so fast because no one knew Dwayne actually; he was a brand new artist, and it's kind of the song kind of made him who he is, you know, now. So it's it, it was a roller coaster. Ride. And you've written for Indie the song "Interested." Mm -hmm. Um, you won a Grammy for that. How 
important is Grammys? Do you think it's very important? Uh, to me, I mean, it's the, it's the number one. I mean, I haven't, uh, I've only won a, as, as a songwriter, producer, mm -hmm. and that was, she actually won Best R&B Album. I think that was 04, 03, 04. Um, may have been 05. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Because uh, I kind of try to forget, you know, and kind of move up, you know, is, you, you're only as, 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 as good as your last thing, you know. So I, you know, I need a Grammy in 08, you know. Uh, 09, I missed this. So it was January. But, uh, um, so, but yeah, it was, it was 04, 05, and she won Best R&B Album. I, had, I did a song on there that I produced and, and wrote. Uh, but Grammys to me is a, is a, is a great honor because um, the people, you have people who are voting members, you know, it's, it's your peers, really. It's, it's your music peers. Um, and there are people in the classical music, uh, in the classical music industry, from the jazz music, they all have to vote on your song, and they all have to vote on you as an artist. Um, so to me, it's a, it's a great honor when it doesn't get too political, you know, and, and people just vote to, for their friends or who they're familiar with. But when it's, when it's just uh, people who really are familiar with your stuff and feel you, um, special enough or your music special enough to vote you in the Grammys, I think that's one of the highest honors. And when you think of the people who've won uh, Grammys, you know, it's, it's a legacy, so. Uh, Were you classically trained or? I wasn't. My mom tried and I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't disciplined enough. Uh, I was already play, playing by ear, you know, and I was uh, playing with TV shows and all of this stuff, you know. Uh, and, and, uh, so I was playing what I wanted to play, you know, and it's kind of like when I got in piano lessons, they were like, you know, da -na 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 -na. and I was like, uh, you know, my friends like the radio song, so I, I, I wasn't disciplined enough to just start all the way over. Not to mention that my teacher was like, you know, uh, you don't need me, you know, so that just kind of encouraged me more. I was like, well, I, I guess I don't, so I had to fight my mom for that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, but I, you know, um, I, I actually didn't do any. I wanted to go to NOCA when, when I was here. I went to St. Aug. I chose to do that. Um, as well as when I went to college, I went to Morehouse College. I was a marketing major, not a music major. Um, I kind of, I think my approach was less of a uh, learned musician. And, and this could encourage people who aren't necessarily music majors who want to do music. I, I never did anything to kind of learn it. It was always what was in my heart. And I think that's what, what comes through in the music and the songwriting and stuff. Um, I knew marketing was always going to be a part of life and a part of music, so I decided to major in that opposed to uh, uh, music, you know. Uh, and and it's, worked, it's worked for me, so. So when did you say, I want to do music? Uh, I had to be, um, I mean, I knew I wanted to be a musician really early on. The songwriting, I think, um, once I realized that, because I, I would go, um, I would go, I would, I would go to the studio and kind of, my, my dad would give me an allowance and I would use that to go and, it's kind of weird when I think of it now, but I just wanted to hear my songs um, recorded. I just, you know, um, not for anybody to listen to. This is before I knew about shopping music to get music placed and to get on other people's records. It was before any of that. I was just paying $75 an hour to hear my own songs, you know, which probably wasn't a great investment at the time. But um, when I, I let somebody else hear my song and they wanted it, and that kind of showed me like, maybe I could really do this, you know? And that was actually when I was 14, 15, uh, going on 15. Um, my first song was uh, on this group called Men of Standard. They were a gospel group at, a, at the time, a major gospel group. And uh, that was my first placement when I was 15. And um, I knew it, you know, and then I, I started to get royalty checks too, you know, because like I said, this was, it was just totally pure, you know, I was just doing it because I loved it. Um, and I got paid too, so I was like, man, I can do what I love and get money. I was like, it's, I'm sold, you know, so I, I've kind of been a, t a tunnel on music since then, you know, and blessed enough not to even have to get any other type of jobs, you know, just, just do music. So who else are you working with right now? Uh, well, right now, um, <clears throat> Music Soul Child, uh, I just finished working on, his, on a song on his record. Uh, Ruben Stutter's actually working on a record right now. Um, this gospel group, Mary Mary, I'm working on. And of course, my, uh, finishing up my solo record. And, uh, and uh, that'll be out in September, hopefully. 
as a songwriter, what is the one thing the songwriter should know about songwriting? One thing, um, <clears throat> I think, you know, to, to uh, please yourself, you know, uh, I, I have a saying, you know, there are work songs, you know, some of the stuff I did with Jermaine Dupri, and uh, it wasn't necessarily what I was wanting to do, you know, it, I kind of did it for work. You know, I'm, like, like as an artist, I've been independent thus far, and I've kind of fed that with the major uh, writing and the production and use that money to put myself on the road and make my own records. Um, but there's work music, you know, that you have to do sometimes. I'd rather do that than, than to get a nine to five. And uh, there, there's music that comes from the heart. And even when I did the stuff with Jermaine, I would try to sneak myself in there because you've got to please yourself first. You know, I don't ever want to hear a song where I'm like, you know, I hate listening to this record. I hate listening to the song I did. So, I, you know, I think it's important to please yourself first opposed because when you start to listen to too many people telling you how to write your own song and, and have your own voice, then it, you kind of lose the song and it's, it's not a pure song anymore. So if I'd say anything, if there was one thing, I'd say uh, please yourself with the song and make sure you write it for you first. You know? How do you approach a song lyrically? When you hit a metal, me melody, mm -hmm. how do you approach it lyrically? Do you say this is going to be a sad song or what? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I kind of let the, the, the melody, some, a, a lot of times, um, you know, not to be weird or deep, but it kind of, the melody a lot of times, often, kind of tells me what, what to say, you know, it kind of is like, if the, if the music comes first, then it's kind of like saying what it wants to talk about, and I kind of go with that, you know, it's like, um, not every up-tempo necessarily has to be a, a, a happy song. Uh, you just kind of got to listen and, and, and really feel the, feel the music to, to, to see what you're going to say. What other business advice would you give to students? Uh, get a good attorney. Uh, <laughs> for real. Like, I could, you know, when you start to do things on your own, man, it, it, you could get jacked up. I, you know, I'm happy to say that I haven't, I haven't signed anything that I, that I wasn't okay with and knew exactly what I was doing, you know. There are a lot of angry artists out here, man, who, who uh, quite frankly, they signed what they signed. You know, it's like, it, it, was, it was no trick. It was no trick. You know, they could have gone through everything and their attorney could have explained everything and then they, they're angry after they realize what they've gotten themselves into. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. and. Uh, so then even you know when, when you run into things that you're unhappy with, you know why, why you're running into them and why you deal with that. I haven't looked at you guys at all. What's up? Yeah, so that's really good. All right, I started with two questions. First off, like, what's kind of your day-to-day -day schedule? Like what, when you wake up in the morning, what are you looking at for like today, tomorrow, and the next couple of days? And also, um, when you approach writing a song for another artist, uh -huh. do they come to you in search of a song? Do you say, hey, I think this style fits you? And also, do you have kind of like a um, producer stylistic input into what they're doing? Uh -huh. Okay, the first question was my day to day. It, 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 it is, is very different from day to day. I mean, I'd like to be at home. I have a studio in Atlanta and, and uh, that's where I like to do most of my stuff. And usually when I'm, when I'm not traveling, that's what I'm doing. Um, this, this is a slow, because I'm working on a record, this isn't a heavy touring period. I'm doing Jazz Fest April 26th though, just in case you guys want to come out of the square. So I'm doing some, some touring, but uh, uh, right now when I'm working on a record, I'm not usually touring a whole bunch until it's time to kind of promote that record and it's getting close to that. Um, so when I'm working on a record and not touring, then a lot of that time I'm, uh, I'm working on other people's records and producing for other people and writing for other people. Um, because it, when, it, when I get in artist mode and I'm touring for myself and putting a record out and promoting my record, I don't usually have the time or the creative space to even work on somebody else's thing. Um, the second thing was uh, when I, somebody comes to me, another artist, um, it, it happens different ways. Sometimes I'll have a song, um, especially with a publishing company, they'll give you a, a who's looking list. And uh, 
it, it goes from every genre to everything, and you can write for whoever you want to write to, and that's what a publishing company does. They'll, they'll shop the songs for you. Um, and sometimes you'll get an idea and say, oh, I know this would fit this person. Um, but th to be honest, relationship is a big way that records get placed these days. So uh, when you're going totally cold and just sending a, a song totally cold, like into the record company, it's kind of like, you know, they have so many people closer to them that they would get songs from. So it, it's important to get a relationship with the artist. And then they can explain because uh, a lot of artists, when they go from record to record, they're, uh, they're evolving. And what you think is their style from their last record, they're like, I'm not there anymore. So when you have a personal relationship, they can be like, this is where I'm trying to go. But then also with the who's looking list, sometimes they'll explain where it's trying to go. It's very detailed. Um, and, um, and sometimes it's word like with Music Soul Child, we were in together, we were writing together. So it was kind of like a, um, you know, a collaboration type thing. And production input, um, only when I'm uh, hired as the producer. If I'm not hired as the producer, I don't really have much say so in that, it, it, except vocal production. So, so just like take your music completely and just do what they want with it. Yeah, well, when you get to a certain point in your career, they would they wouldn't do that because they're hiring, they're paying you to to write. You know, so it's like if they're asking, it, you know, it used to be let me get on somebody's record. Not that I've all the way gotten to the top of my career. There's so much more I can, I, I can do. But when usually when people, for instance, when Music Soul Child's people ask me to write, they knew what they were asking for. So they wouldn't ask me to come and write to just totally switch my thing. And that would kind of mess up the relationship too. So they wouldn't do that, yeah. Um, I have a question about when you're writing songs. Do you ever, have you ever written a song with a certain artist in mind or a certain voice in mind or a style of music like Stevie Wonder or uh -huh. You know, like someone totally different. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I mean, I do it all the time. You know, um, especially you know, e even going down to who's looking list is kind of like, man, I could, I, you know, I come up with a song and I'm like, I, I wouldn't do this personally as an artist, but this would fit that person. Yeah, that definitely happens all the time. Okay. Yeah. I also have a question about like your demos uh -huh. when you're shopping a song. Do you prefer, or is it better for songwriters in general to? Like fully record the song with the full arrangement, it, you know, if it's a full band, or just the bare essentials like piano or guitar, so the artist can, you know, do more with the arrangement. Yeah, it's changed over time. I, you know, um, A and R's used to be creative enough for you to, to go in an office and play your guitar, and they get the song. Unfortunately, the A and R's these days are very musical people. Uh, they've turned into business people, and. Uh, not musical at all. So it's kind of like you have to give them the whole picture these days. It's like you got to fully record it so they can hear it all the way because there's no creative bone in their body. <laughs> now, it's, it's pretty bad these days, the end. most of them. Uh, so I would, I would recommend full, full out on the demos now. Uh, yeah, can you explain how you uh, went from like a mu uh, marketing degree in college to writing? You know, Grammy-winning songs. I just don't understand where. where uh, I was writing first. I was writing first. Um, I never. There was never. Like I said, I, I was. I kind of knew what I wanted to do from 14 on. So every step I took at that point, um, like from placing that first song at 15, I was in the gospel industry for a while. And um, when I, even when I went to college, and I knew that I was going to major in marketing, it was always with the intentions of doing music. It was never like. Uh, I, let me get a, a you know a backup plan so I might work in a marketing firm. It was never that at all. And uh, my, when I moved off campus, um, like I said, always still doing music because um, you know the thing about Destiny is if you're not doing what you do, people can't uh, you know people can't even find you where you are. So if you're already doing it, people can kind of catch you and like oh I heard they were doing this. I heard um, when I moved off campus at Morehouse. It just so happened that NDRE was, uh, lived in my complex. And I, there was a piano in the lobby. And me and my friend were just playing around on the piano. Um, you know, it's just right place, right time. This is, what, this is what I'm talking about. When, you move, when you're really serious about your craft, you move where the music, you move where the craft is. You know, if you want to be an actor, you need to be in LA or New York, really. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately. And I, I knew Atlanta was that type of place at that point. 
just happened to be playing. She came down. We started talking about Stevie Wonder. She sang for me. She was finished with her first record at that time. We became friends, like I said, relationship. I gave her a song. She liked it. It's really as simple as that. She, we recorded it, and uh, it won a Grammy Award. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it, it really happened just like that. You know, it's like, um, I can't even say that I was hustling. Like, oh, man, I'm sending all these demos out. It kind of just happened relationship-based. And after a Grammy, and after that type of record, it just becomes, the industry's not very big. You know, it seems that way, but it's not very big at all. It's a small family, so once you do one thing, it's kind of like, you just go on to the next thing. I can always say now, yeah, I won a Grammy for this, blah, blah, blah. You know, can I work on this record? Or they're asking me, you know? So it really happened, it, it was a natural progression just like that. So it, for, you know, other than moving into a complex with a well-established star, is there anything that, you know, you could, like any direct, should we just be in the right place at the right, should we just It's really, out? yeah, it, it's really about being in the right place. I was, I was also doing open mics at that time in Atlanta and really uh, getting a relationship with the musicians in town and the songwriter and finding who the producers were. Now, I'm kind of a loner in music in the sense of, I usually produce my own stuff and write my own stuff. So it wasn't even like I was trying to collaborate, but I was just letting myself, I was letting people know what I do by being available is really what it is, you know. I moved to New York for a year after Katrina and it was, it was about that for me, it was about accessibility. And while I had friends who lived in New York, um, and it was just a flight away, like from Atlanta, it's, it's an hour and a half, two hours a uh, flight. But uh, it was a whole, it was a different thing when I moved. They were like, oh, you're here? We can do this, 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 this. I'm like, I, you know, I was just an hour and a half. I can always take a flight, but it's about being accessible and it's about being, people seeing you really and being able to see you consistently and see, seeing you do what you do, you know what I mean? So. Um, I don't know that there's a science to it. It's just kind of like, I mean, I could probably say there's a science to it if it happened to me that way, but it happened to me. I just, I mean, everything in my career, like I said, the, the Stellar Award, which is, you know, the biggest gospel award, it kind of, it happened like, I, I wrote it for someone else. And they came in and it was like, I didn't know the guy. He was a new artist. He was kind of a nobody, you know, to put it, put it plainly. And the song like just blew up. Radio just loved it and it, you know, so it was just kind of like I was just doing me, you know, and on that nat natural progression, people called me where I was, you know. Um, what public performance um, organization are you a member of? And uh, why did you choose that one or the other? That? Why did you choose that one? Um, you know, what, like I said, my, that first song I placed when I was 15, so it wasn't a whole bunch of my decision. It was kind of like my dad and because I wasn't, you had to be 18 to do the publishing thing, I believe, or as a songwriting thing. I can't remember, but um, they just kind of told me that was the right one. <laughs> they just told me that was the one to sign with because there's not much different in the affiliates. Uh, CSAC, I actually am happy, you know, these days that I went with CSAC. It's a private company. Um, the way they track their live performance stuff is a lot more intricate than BMI and ASCAP. Um, I didn't know that then at all, you know, um, but it just so happened that it worked out that way. Um, but they're all about the same, you know, until you get a personal relationship inside those companies. Uh, they kind of do the same things for you. Um, so it wasn't really an educated decision like that. It, they, um, somebody told me that, that that's what I should do. Somebody who I looked up to, so, it, you know, said CSAC, so I just, I've been with them ever since. Um, so is the PJ Morton band on sign? Are you guys doing the indie thing, or are you? Uh, well, that was just one record. I, uh -huh. I'm, I'm back solo again. I just did that. It was just kind of a something I wanted to do. Um, we may do another record as PJ Morton band, um, but uh, we we did we actually did an indie deal with this uh, company called Brass Music in uh -huh. Atlanta, and their uh, they were uh, their distribution was through Atlantic through ADA. So yeah. Uh -huh. Were, were, how do you, I mean, what was, did you do any of the marketing for it or anything like that? Or did you just outsource all that stuff or was uh, it? Yeah, yeah, we did, so we, we did some outsourcing. A lot of it was just super grassroots. Um, I know the indie thing because I've done it, you know, on the soul scene especially, there's a, there's a group of people 
all over the U.S. And once you meet one, it con it's kind of like it connects all the towns. So we just, you know, we did a real indie and got on a van and went from, from place to place. And at that point, people had known me as a, uh, as, as a performer. So uh, we had an audience already. Um, we were able to get a Target sponsorship for, for, uh, for one of the tours that, uh, that we did, which really helped out, you know. And uh, but we just did the, the, the uh, internet thing. Um, no radio, no TV, because uh, radio, it can be really expensive. And it can really not help. You, know, you just got to know when to use it and how to use it. Because you can spend $25,000 really quick and not really see anything happen. You know, and TV's e even worse. Um, so yeah, the marketing was real internet based and uh, kind of street team type stuff for that record specifically. Um, when is the best time for a songwriter to hire a publisher? Is it best when you just have too many songs and not enough time <clears> to <throat> shop them, or? Um, yeah, well, you mean a publishing company, not the, the affiliate. Right. CSEC, ASCAP, yeah. BMI, you should do that immediately. Yeah. You, you should do that. Um, a publishing company, yeah, when you get a lot of songs and you can, uh, you know, the way they sign these days, which is really, <clears throat> Not cool like it used to be, you know. I'm sure there's some indie uh, publishers that 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 uh, accept um, uh, music that's not been charted or not, uh, or, because like big companies like EMI, they want you to have a song on the radio already, and you know all this type of stuff. Um, but yeah, when you get so many songs and you feel like, man, this could go in this movie, this could go in this, you know. And there's some independent companies that play songs in TV. Um, I wish I had the website. They play songs in TV and movies, and that's really the way to make it happen. Like, I mean, uh, Ingrid Michael said, I'm not even sure if she even uh, has signed a, uh, a major deal yet. I mean, she, does, she didn't have to, and I know she took a long time if she did, but TV and movies is the move right now uh, for, so for songwriters. You know, more than radio, getting your, uh, it's like, you know, the Apple commercials are the new radio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so, so it, it, that's really important if you can get, get with those. And, and usually they're not, um, they don't care where you come from and they don't care what you've done. It's just like a good song is a good song. So um, that's who I would reach out to, you know what I mean? <clears throat> um, the artists you work with, I know most of them are, but do they have to be internationally known or could they just be local? Like from um, New Orleans per se for you to work with them? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. No, I, don't, I, don't really, I don't really discriminate on who I work with if I like the music. Um, but what happens is um, your time starts to be, uh, you got to choose what you're going to spend your time on. And, you know, uh, the more things you do, the more things you have to pay for. So a lot of times, you know, uh, it, becomes, it becomes a financial issue. You know, unless you just got so much money where you don't need to make more, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of times you have to, I mean, I, I've, I've given my services for the, the super low low to, to some independent artists, you know what I'm saying? Because I believed in them that much. Um, but it really, really, really has to be about the music at that point. Um, because, um, you know, if, there, if there's no, um, if it's not a smart decision financially, then it's like, I really have to just believe in it, you know? Um, but it can't be both. It can't be bad and no money. We've had songwriters here before, and I ask this question every time. How do you deal with doubt and, like, not trusting yourself and, like, being in that place where you're like, do I write this or do I not? Yeah. Like, things of that nature? That's, that, that, um, it kind of goes back to what I was saying about um, being pure, man, and writing what you like. You know, and, and, and you know what you like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you just have to not doubt that. And if people don't get it, they just don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But you're, every time you write a song, you're progressing yourself. It's not always work music. It's hard music and it's stuff, you're trying to better yourself as a writer, you know? And uh, I mean, people like the Neptunes, man, they called their stuff like, I mean, whack for years. It, 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 they, the people wouldn't take their beats and wouldn't take their songs. And then once, once somebody got on it and liked it, then everybody got on it and everybody liked it. That's just how the industry works. So don't doubt yourself because what you may be doubting may be the next thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, 
uh, like even this uh, um, umbrella, which was one of the hugest, you know, the biggest songs of the year. Um, that that eh, eh, that's in that song. That guy Dream has been doing that for years. He's he lives in Atlanta, and people were like, "What's all the A's in the?" You know what I mean? And and I'm sure they all want the A's now. You know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> you you just can't. You gotta you gotta do it for you, and you gotta not care, um, right? Unself, you, you know, write write these songs selfishly, man, and and just just hope that somebody digs it. And if they don't, keep doing what makes you feel good, and and somebody's gonna get it. There's got to be somebody like you in the world. You know what I'm saying? Any other questions? Got one. What about mentorship? Uh, as far I, I've never, uh, I've never uh, physically like set up a mentorship. There are guys that I have under me. There's this guy JoJo in Atlanta who I kind of have under me and kind of he, he travels with me and, and writes songs and. Um, uh, kind of watches how I produce and watches how I write. Um, he's not signed to me or anything. It's not official. It's just uh, me trying. That's the way I'm trying to give back. You know, um, the schedule doesn't allow a whole lot of uh, just one-on-one -on -one stuff. You know, because it's very, it's a very hectic life. But uh, you know, I'm down. Somebody had to mentor me. But I think the way I mentor, or the reason I mentor the way I do is because that's the way I was mentored. The people who taught me how to play. Uh, this guy Joey here in New Orleans, he uh, he never sat me down and taught me anything. It's like he told me to watch him, and that's what I did, and that's how I learned. So I just tell people to watch me because I don't know how to teach because I never was taught. You know what I'm saying? So um, I guess you can only do what you've been taught yourself. So yeah. Great. Any other questions? This is my last one. Um, so I need a piece of advice tying in with doubt and film. Um, I'm a songwriter and I just write, you know, solo stuff. Um, but I was sent a message from an old friend from high school who's in New York working on films. And he sent me a message saying, hey, send me a link to your music. I'm doing a movie about this, like, old club in Memphis. And if we like your music, we'd put it in the film and maybe you can be in it, you know, and I'll send you the script. And my first doubt was, I don't even think he's heard my music. Why the hell is he sending me this message? You know, I don't, I don't play blues. Right. But would I be stupid not even to send him it's my MySpace I mean, link? You know, yeah. I mean, it's, a, <laughs> it's an opportunity um, for him to hear. And I'm sure, I mean, if he's a, if he's a filmmaker, then there are going to be other films. And if, if what he hears doesn't fit for that, he can always go back and be like, oh, remember that tune that uh, she did for that? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, like... It's not always about right now. It's like it's stuff. It's songs that I didn't place until three years after I wrote them. You know what I mean? So it's like um, you never stop and never focus on one thing. So I know some people who get who want to sell this one song so bad and they just stay on this one song and never get past it. You got to keep writing and keep writing and keep writing and let them catch up. You know, it's like the the, the worst the worst that can happen is that you'll have all these songs and want to blow up and then you can just keep on uh, throwing them out. All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, in 10 minutes, we have the master class, which we have one-on-one -on -one interaction with students. So thank you all. So uh, please give Mr. Warren a big <laughs> Thank you all for coming um, to this part of the master class. All right, now I'm going to ask Mr. Martin to play and show us his songwriting process. All right, I've, uh, I've never done this before, actually. Uh, showed anybody my uh, the process. I guess uh, I read this book on the Beatles before, and it was after I was a writer. It was probably just a year a year or two ago. Um, but I heard that um, Paul would, uh, you know, this sometimes happens with me. I'll have a melody and I'll play it and I'll know what I want to sing. Like, da, 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 da. And it's just kind of mouthing, you know, it's not even saying real words. But uh, I heard Paul was saying, uh, he just, he had a dream and he woke up and he just kept saying cheese and, cheese and eggs, cheese and eggs. He just knew what he wanted to sound like. And eventually it became yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, there's a song I did. I, I was in London and it's called Mary, but I was it goes, there was this girl, her name was Mary Sue. Uh, 
but it, it started off, I was just like, and I had a camera with me uh, on that whole, I was in London, and I had never seen myself write before, you know, but it was kind of like, uh, um, I wasn't saying anything at all, but I knew what I wanted it to feel like. It's kind of like you mouth certain things to see to see what it feels like, you know. And sometimes I'll get, I'll have a whole um, kind of a pattern type of thing. Um, I used to play this all the time. And I used to play it all the time, like over and over. And I knew it was pretty, you know, but I didn't know, I didn't know that I wanted to, and then became a song. Like, I need to know, will you be there? Are you for sure? Can't take the pain, not anymore. I need to know. Um, so uh, sometimes it comes where I have melody, um, and I know what the song, even what the vocal melody is supposed to sound like, but don't have words yet. Um, and then, um, then sometimes I just have because I'm a musician and I'm playing all the time, I'll come up with little things and people are like, what song is that? And I'm like, it's not a song yet. Uh, so that also happens as well as um, sometimes, and this, it, this is the rarest form for me, but I'll, I'll hear something, um, I'll hear some, somebody say something and I'll get out my phone or something like that and, and, get, and put it in the notes and just write a line and know that I want that to be in a chorus or I wanted to I want to talk about that something like that and then eventually um, I'll revisit it and it and it'll become a song you know so um, those are really my three different approaches to 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 writing I have to say um, there are there are some producers who uh, give me tracks and whatnot but I, I don't really do too well with that I guess because I wasn't there for the building of the track so it's kind of like I wasn't there for that experience and usually, unless it's work music, like I tell you, where it's something I have to do because I gotta pay bills, uh, I'll make it work, <laughs> and I'll I'll get inspired by the track and and, and kind of get into it. Um, but that doesn't usually happen uh, naturally. <clears throat> Would you mind playing us your favorite song? My favorite song? Yeah. Uh, of mine. Yeah. Oh. Um, I uh, <coughs> still have a cold, but I this this is my favorite. I have favorite songs for different reasons, um, um, and this is my favorite song. It's another song that I wrote while I was over in London. I get really inspired when I'm over there. I'm actually going there tomorrow to work on some stuff, but um, it, because it's a different place and it's, it feels real far away, you know, and it kind of puts you in a a certain space. But this song is. Um, uh, it's it, it's my favorite because it's it's a concept that I never heard anybody. I almost felt like I didn't write it. I was like, oh man, that's a cool song. Um, it's a concept I never heard before, and it's about kind of being in love with two different people, um, be, being um, kind of being confused. How the real story went was, uh, you know, I was in love with this girl, and, and uh, it ended. It ended, and I mo I moved on, and. Uh, thought that was really over, you know, and, uh, and, and a lot of it was because um, she was kind of out of sight, so I didn't really have to even visit that. And then I moved on, got another girlfriend, fell in love, and uh, um, my ex came, and I, I saw her, and I was like, man, I'm not quite over this. And she was like, well, maybe we should try again, or, you know. So it put me in a, in a really weird place, um, but it's called Two Hearts. So I'm play that. Yes, please. 
plenty But something's gotta get done Gotta get back to one But I just don't know where to start With these two hearts I've got two hearts Unfortunately it happened this way And there's a fork in the road Trying to choose which way to go But I just don't know I've got two hearts Oh doctor please remedy this The hearts have grown much too far And soon they won't be able to be But something's gotta get done Gonna get back to one But I just don't know where to start With these two oh. yeah. Thank you, Thank you. <clears throat> Now I'm gonna ask Jasmine Blue to come up and sing And Mr. Martin's gonna critique it Hello. Um, this song I am about to sing, it is called Your Name. I wrote it when I was 13. <laughs>
Am I so what? What advice would you give her as a um, um, I say, well, first of all, the good, you know, the good stuff. You have a beautiful voice, and uh, the song, the song was pretty as well. I think um, the, um, for a record or for perf performance um, uh, purposes. You gotta look up a little bit. I know even I close my eyes a lot, you know, when I sing because I'm I'm in it, you know. But every once in a while I gotta snap out of it and, and look at the people that I'm talking to. And um and you know, you gotta get to the point where uh where you don't have to focus on the keys, you know. It's kinda like um the uh, the, the piano for me has become a uh, it's a secondary. I, I don't you, you gotta get where you don't have to think about it so you don't have to focus on it. And you can focus on what you're saying and what you're what you're talking, what you're uh, trying to tell the people, so they can hear you, you know. And the and the interludes can get kind of long. I mean, for a record, that's cool because you can have all the pieces to it, you know. But for performing, you might want to not have the interludes as as long and stuff. It's you sound great though. Yeah, where where. <laughs> Now we have Neva Joseph, who's a senior and graduate in music education. Okay, this piece is called It's Time. And um, it's basically me trying to look at my life, the situation of my life in a different way, instead of focusing on what I don't think is right and all the things that really annoy me. It's really my way of trying to flip the script and use it as positive energy, so. Rich voice, uh, you know. I like the changes. I like the changes in the song as well. Definitely a message in the song. I I have to say the same thing. Um, you know, I know that I've been playing a long, long time, and I was a musician first. But uh, the same thing where you have to kind of look up at look up at us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I dug it though. Dug it. Yeah. Same. Just 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 um. Uh, you know, we're here, so that's, you know, we just want to know that you're talking to us, that's all. Yeah?
Elliot Love, who currently has a single out, so he was performing that. The song that I want to recite for you guys um, is called Letting You Go. Um, now, to keep it fresh, I want to recite this song as if I wrote it today. All right, because I kind of just went with the pen. I just followed the pen and we kept writing. All right, I'm ready, Tom. She don't wanna call, I don't wanna call her either What are we fighting for? It's not over All I want is the support to stand beside me All I want is the gift of love to shield all over me I don't wanna be alone like this without my baby Cause she don't wanna understand my feelings It's driving me crazy Girl, I got my own dreams Why can't you respect that? I was there for you Why can't you be there for me too? Girl, I love you so But I got reason enough to let you go Something came between us I lost my focus Wasn't me, wasn't you Wasn't the truth about us, yeah Girl, I got my own dreams Why can't you respect that? I was there for you Why can't you be there for me too? I didn't even notice you were horse, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes that could kill a whole thing, you know, you giving them the, the, the excuse and we didn't even know, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, the, I like I like the song, I like your energy. Um, it was a good beat section, like it, it set it up every time. I could hear it in my head, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you respect it? And let you go, that's a great hook. It's over and over, it, it can stick in people's head. I dug it, it's cool, yeah. Essa Williams from Dillard. Good night, everybody. Um, I really wasn't prepared to do something I wrote. I didn't really know that we were doing that, so. I was prepared to do another person's song. Um, it's by NDIRE, and it's called The Truth. I don't know if y'all know it or not, but I hope y'all like what I'm singing tonight, and that's it. I found my 
myself immediately and treat by him. It's almost like I knew this man from another life. Like back when maybe I was his husband, maybe he was my wife. And even the things I don't like about him are fine with me. Cause it's not hard for me to understand him cause he's so much like me. And it's truly in my pleasure to share his company. And I know that it's God's gift to breathe the air that he breathes. Cause he is the truth. Say, my baby, it's so real. And I love the way that he makes me feel. And if I am a reflection of him, then I must be flat. can't comment on the songwriting because uh, it's not your tune. I kind of knew that jam because uh, that's, that's on the album that won Grammy, uh, that I won the Grammy for. Um, so I, I'll just talk about the singing. And um, you definitely have a great voice, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's definitely your own. You got your own sound, your own tone, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you looked at everybody, you, you kind of told a story, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with closing your eyes, I'll tell you that. But it's just, it's just a matter of looking up because when you feel it, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, I like ugly faces and stuff. You know, that's what I like about John Mayer. Like he, like he don't care what he look like. If he feel it, like he just feels it, you know what I'm saying? Not, you didn't make an ugly face, but I'm saying you, you, um, you close your eyes though. You know what I'm saying? I do that all the time and, uh, and a, uh, an occasional ugly face. And, uh, but yeah, no, you, you, uh, you sounded great and, you know, that's all I can say about that. Yeah. Anybody else have questions about songwriting or music? Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about uh, the process of writing lyrics, how you go about it, and if you do a lot of rewriting or if you sort of stick with original copies of things. 
Um, I, uh, I'm one of those guys who does, I don't do a lot of rewrites at all. I, um, you know, I kind of feel like <clears throat> writing a song is a, is a conversation and, and uh, it, you know, while life is a natural progression and when you have conversations, maybe you say things that you didn't necessarily want to say, but it was honest and true at that time. Um, so I kind of don't do a whole bunch of that because um, I'm a perfectionist, you know, and it usually comes out on the, mu the musical side. Um, but but I think mistakes are, are great, you know. I think they're they're perfect imperfections that happen all the time, um, and uh, I let that happen with the purity because you start to take the purity out of it, you know, when you fix things so perfect. Um, but in my writing, you know, I, I'm definitely a person who uh, I believe in a great chorus, a great hook that um, that that people can remember. That's what you know, I talk about the pop in my music. Uh, is popular because the world can sing it and, and and they can remember it and they you know they're driving their cars and it's, it it pops in their head. Um, but I wouldn't recommend doing a whole bunch of rewriting. You know that's a it's it's it, it starts to not be honest anymore. Thanks. In my opinion, yeah. Have I ever? Uh, no, no, not as not as of yet. Uh, I know so many songwriters. Who are so much better than me and and have done so much more than me, um, I, yeah, I haven't felt that uh that that pull yet, you know, um, maybe in some years, I don't know, uh, but no, 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 not yet, not yet. As a, as a singer or a writer, kind of artist, um, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's 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 an important question, man, it, and. Uh, um, because it's it's so easy to fall into, um, you know. Where whereas back in the day, when I say like the '60s or the '70s, um, the industry was about finding a new thing. You know, if you if you watch the Ray Charles movie, um, they stopped his sessions because they said we don't need another Nat King Cole. You know, we don't need another whoever they said. Um, and that was a diss. Like that was bad back then to try to sound somebody. But 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 these days. You go to these labels and they're like, we're looking for another Marion or we we need another Britney. You know, they I mean you saw it. You saw Britney came out, then uh then um who's the girl? Who Christina came out and then uh uh who's the girl? Jessica Simpson came out, you know what I'm saying? And Sync came out, ninety eight degrees came out, Backstreet Boys it's like it's cool to be like the same and and that's whack to me, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's very important to um, like the guy asked me, when you doubt yourself, I think a lot of that doubt is 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 God given for you to be who you are, and and for it to be, if it's left, then it's left. And but at some point, is everything's going to come center, and people are going to get it, or whoever needs to get it. See, it, it 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 all depends on what your desires are. If your desire, see, I don't need, I'd like a million people and millions of people to buy my records. But more importantly, I want people who get my records to get it, you know what I'm saying, and to get me and understand me. And when that's your desire, then you're not going after the numbers, but if they come, that's cool. So if your focus is just being the, the best you that you can be, because you're, you're already you, you know what I'm saying, you don't have to find it. You just have to eliminate all the things that you see and, put your, and try to find yourself without comparisons. Now, of course, <clears throat> I think D'Angelo said this, from uh, imitation comes uh, innovation. Uh, so of course, I, I listen to Stevie so much that when I started to write, there's some Stevie that came out, you know what I'm saying? That, that's gonna happen and that's cool, but that's how it happened. Stevie was inspired by somebody, you know, uh, everybody was, so, but it, it's a matter of putting those things together and putting you in there and figuring out how they can, because we gotta stand on somebody's shoulders, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. How do you find a good balance between finding a new voice for yourself, like from one work to the next? Because you don't want everything to sound alike, but then still finding a voice that people know, oh, well, that's you. Right. Like, so that from one work to the next, you know, you don't want to have something that's like, oh, well, I had a good hit on this album, so I'm going to make another one of that. Yeah, you sure. know, instead of going from Backstreet Boys to NSYNC, you know, trying to find that homogeny, you know, like people yeah. tend to do that to themselves within, sure. like from album to album. How do you, and record companies do you do. sit there and think about like how you're going <clears> to <throat> make the same sort of like 
uh, set up or anything, or do you strive to sound different everywhere um, you go? Well, I, I strive to grow personally, and then it comes out in the songs. Like, um, I know um, I was just working on Music Soul Child's album, and Teach Me was his last huge single, you know, and they're like, we need another Teach Me, and it's like, that's cool. And you, you got to do those, like, work music, you know what I'm saying? It's the work music and the personal music. As an artist, I had that issue because um, my records all sound different. Um, but the thread is me, my writing style, and my voice. So even when things change, because um, I, I'd like to be known for not knowing exactly what's going to happen, opposed to I know exactly what. I mean, it, work, it, it works for different people. You know, I, I, this is not a science, you know. Um, I think John Mayer did it when he when he went from uh, you know, and I didn't even like it, but because I'm a fan, I just support it. You know, uh, I mean, I didn't love it, I liked it. But when he went from John Mayer to John Mayer Trio, I was like, this is cool, but you know, it's not necessarily what I want. But when you respect people, that's why you got it. The fans you get have have to be people who are, are willing to grow and change with you through the the cool and not cool. If you don't love it, you don't love it, but you're still gonna support. I still went and you got the next record. Um, my first solo record sounded very different from my second PJ, went from the PJ Morton band record. And the people who supported me for me stuck around, you know what I'm saying? And you've got to be willing to lose, you've got to be willing to lose fans, you know, because at the end of the day, you want to be you. Because if you start to be somebody else and you start to, because people are fickle. So once you think you've got them figured out and they change their minds, then you're, you're stuck, you know, and you could have been changing and evolving all, all the while, you know what I'm saying? So um, I think there's a level of being the same and not being so left, you know. I did an alter ego album where I didn't name it myself and I just put it out on MySpace, you know, and that was kind of my way of getting the all the way left stuff out, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, but as an artist, you, you have some type of responsibility to be who you are, but don't let people control how you... Uh, you know what I'm saying? How you do your music. Because you got in, you got to think of how you, how you start is how you finish. I got into it selfishly. I want to leave it self, I want to leave selfishly. You know what I'm saying? I want the last record to be exactly before I, I, I pass away. I want it to be exactly what I want it to do. Not, you know what I'm saying? So. Selfish. Oh, uh, man, it happens all the time. I, I think uh, um, <clears throat> if you're open to collaborating, you bring somebody in to kind of see see their take on it. And sometimes all they got to do is say a line and you're back in it, you know. Or sometimes you just got to you gotta walk away and, uh, you know, go back to it at some point and it'll come back. It happens all the time, though. I get... I'm, I, you know, my style, I get huge uh, writer's block um, because when I write songs, I write a whole bunch of them at one time. It's like, it's like spring or something and all the flowers come and then it's, <laughs> it's fall, you know, and, and I, I can't write a song. I remember when I got off tour from uh, Eric Badu, well, I, I couldn't write that whole tour, first of all. It was so frustrating. I was seeing all these experiences and we were on this tour bus and everything was cool and I was seeing all these cities. And I couldn't write a song, you know, and it was like, that was killing me. And then a month after that, I couldn't write a whole song. It's like, so it just happens, you know, I just let it be. I just let it be because I don't want to force it anyway. Um, but when it comes, it comes and it's there. You know, that's how I write. I know people who can write every day. Now, now quantity is not necessarily quality because I know some bad songs from people who write every day. If it happens naturally, then it does. But... I said, don't force it. You know. Is that me? Yeah. Um, hi it's again. My, be my best friend right here. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, uh -huh. I'm wondering if you might be able to help me. Um, like I just started gigging like in December, November, December on a regular basis, and my shows, you know, it's like I play piano and and guitar, and I do the singer songwriter thing, and then. Like I play banjo, so I do banjo and like cool. ukulele. But I'm worried about, I haven't yet like made a press kit or, you know, send it out to other venues or festivals or anything because I'm nervous that like they'll get this information about me that's like, oh, why isn't she just like one thing, you know, like if 
if we're a folk festival, we don't want piano. Or if we're like a club, we don't want banjo. Right. You know, it's like I'm worried if I should just like stick to my guns and just be like, this is who I am. This is my music. You know, I'm like, I'm just wondering like what, what path, you uh, know. Yeah, yeah, I think... Uh... I think um, well, I think you could show all uh, you know. You could do a cool EPK that could show all the things that you do, uh -huh. um, and um, it could show all aspects of of who you are in a cool way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the people who don't get it, they're just not supposed to at this point. You know, um, I'm I, as you can see, I'm a big cheerleader about staying true to who you are, and only because I've done that, I did it when people didn't get it. And I, I did it, and I know what it feels like when people do get it. And it's like, man, you know, I haven't even changed. I've still been being me, you know. And finally, people got it, and and it's a it's a it's a great feeling, and it's the ultimate thing, you know what I'm saying? So if you got your fans at these uh at the the the, the singer songwriter uh, open mics and whatnot, let that grow, mm -hmm. because the thing you want is the people. So if you can get the people everywhere, everybody else will follow. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. what I that's what I did before I went to A and R's and stuff. I would do these shows, and then my following got so crazy that they're looking like they're missing out. You know, it's like what where 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 have I been? So don't kind of think of that. But I would say get an EPK that shows you doing everything. Show you okay. shows you playing the piano, banjo, you know, uh, uh, ukulele. You know everything, your guitar, whatever. Okay, thanks. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Not too many. Like, nah. um, am I missing anyone for the performance? Is Lauren Youngblood here? And Aaron Waddle. Okay. Um, I want to thank y'all for coming to the master class. Um, if you have any more questions, he'll be here for a few minutes. So thank y'all for coming.